Crossbridge Cycling. So we've got actin and myosin bound together. So we've created what's called a crossbridge. And crossbridges are really important when it comes to muscle contraction. And so now we actually need to have the muscle contraction occur. So here are the two objectives for this <clears throat> set of slides. Okay. So the sliding filament theory is basically we take a relaxed muscle and we contract it. We shorten it. Remember what happens to the I band, the H band, and the H zone. And H is here at the bottom in case you didn't see that. All right. It's actually not too complicated. The thing to remember is that we're looking at ATP and its products, and it's going to have an effect on myosin which will also affect actin. Okay, so we start off where we ended with our last video. Actin and myosin are binding. We call this the rigor state. They're tightly bound. Okay, rigor state, this is where we get the, the term rigor mortis. Okay, so when someone's died, they experience shortly after they're dead, they have died, uh, they experience rigor mortis. And I don't remember exactly what the time frame is for that, but what's happened here is actin and myosin are tightly bound. And the reason for that is that there's no more available ATP. Now, when eight, and the, what happens is when we're in this tightly bound state, or when these fibers are in this tightly bound state, ATP will bind to myosin, and that causes actin and myosin to break apart. Now, when someone dies, there's still ATP, and so crossbridge cycling, this process that we're going through, will continue to exist, but eventually we're going to run out of ATP, and so then actin and myosin are tightly bound together. Okay, so remember, something happens with ATP, which causes something to happen with myosin. So in this case, ATP binds to myosin, that causes actin and myosin to separate. Next, <clears throat> notice that the ATP breaks down, right? So it becomes ADP, phosphate, and energy. That release of energy causes the, co causes the myosin head to cock. Okay, notice the angle here, notice the angle here. It's a lot different. Okay. When it becomes cocked, it also, and by it, I mean myosin, reattaches to actin, but this isn't a tight bind. Notice that it's just a little bit hanging on. Okay. ATP breaks down, that energy that's released cocks the myosin head. The next thing that happens is phosphate leaves. Okay. So you see this phosphate here, it's gone. And when it, le when it leaves, the filament moves because this myosin head is going back to its original form. Okay, it's uncocking. Okay, we call this the power stroke. So the PI or the phosphate's released, power stroke occurs, which moves actin towards the M line. The next thing that happens is ADP leaves, and now actin and myosin are back to tight binding. And this continues on and on. As long as we've got available calcium in order for actin and myosin to bind, and as long as we've got available ATP for them to separate and go through this whole process, muscle contraction will occur. Crossbridge cycling will occur. Okay, so put this to put this in words, we've got this. We have tight binding, so we're in the rigor state. ATP binds, actin and myosin separate. ATP breaks down, the energy causes the myosin head to cock. Um, the inorganic phosphate, PI, leaves, so that causes the power stroke. So actin is pulled to the middle by the myosin head. ADP is released, actin and myosin um, have tight binding again. That is the basics of cross-bridge cycling, or you might see this as the sliding filament theory, because we're sliding actin and myosin over each other.